All my life, I've been dedicated to teaching people how to drive. 20 years under my belt, hundreds of students, thousands of hours behind the wheel. I've seen it all, talented beginners and hopeless klutzes. But the case with my mother-in-law, Gabriella, turned out to be truly unique. When she came to me with a request to become her instructor, I didn't see anything special about it. So what if a 55-year-old lady decided to learn how to drive? Moreover, Gabriella had always been active and athletic, taking care of herself. A slender, fit blonde with a sharp gaze of green eyes, the kind that men of all ages admire. To be honest, we've never been particularly close. No, she didn't nag me or interfere with my life with her daughter. She just kept her distance as a mother-in-law should. Polite, but with a certain coolness. And then suddenly such a request to become her personal instructor. Of course I agreed. After all, it's my job. And the first lessons went smoothly. Gabriella grasped everything on the fly. She easily memorized the rules and mastered the basic maneuvers. It was amazing with what grace and ease she handled the car. Sometimes I caught myself admiring her. Her sculpted hands on the wheel, her focused profile, her flexible back. But then I would pull myself together. What nonsense, she's my wife's mother after all. Just a student like all the others. That fateful day started as usual. Gabriella and I decided to drive out of town to a forest road. There are fewer cars there, and you can calmly practice more complex elements. The weather was wonderful. Sun, birds singing, beauty. Gabriella was in high spirits. She joked, laughed, recalled some funny stories from her life. I relaxed, enjoying the light conversation and the peace of the still sleepy forest outside the window. And then she suddenly pulled over to the side of the road and stopped the car. What happened? I wondered. Is everything okay? Gabriella didn't answer. She just looked at me with a long, strange gaze. There was something in her green eyes, daring and alluring. My mouth suddenly went dry. George, we need to talk, she said quietly and placed her hand on my knee. I froze, paralyzed by her touch and gaze. Thoughts raced. What's going on? What is she doing? This can't be happening. George, I've been wanting to tell you for a long time. Gabriella leaned closer, her hot breath scorching my cheek. I really like you, for a while now. Her lips were so close, soft, enticing. My mind screamed, no, you can't. But my body treacherously leaned in. One more moment, and our lips met in a searing, passionate kiss. This is insanity, the inner voice insisted. Pure insanity, kissing your own mother-in-law and in a car in the middle of the forest, no less. If we get caught, it's the end. The end of my reputation, career, family, everything. But how sweet were those kisses? How intoxicating the touches. I didn't even notice how we ended up in the back seat, feverishly tearing off each other's clothes, skin to skin, breath to breath. We were no longer concerned with propriety and prohibitions. How many times have I read and heard about such cases? A son-in-law and a mother-in-law, ha! Huh? A hackneyed plot for jokes and cheap novels. And now I'm stuck in it myself. And how? My mind kept saying that we need to stop. This is a mistake, a fatal mistake. Think about your wife, about your family. You love them, damn it! But passion, wild and unbridled, overshadowed everything. To hell with morality, with duty. Only this woman sprawled beneath me, only the heat of her body mattered. We made love frantically and shamelessly, like two starved beasts. We bit, scratched, moaned out loud. The car rocked, but we didn't care. Only this moment existed, this madness burning the soul to ashes. And afterwards, lying in each other's arms, wet with sweat and sated, we were silent. Thoughts swarmed in my head. What have we done? How can we fix this? Is there really no turning back? The guilt came crashing down with renewed force. Shame burned my cheeks, gnawed at me from the inside. How could I? How dare I betray my closest people? Giving in to an impulse, a momentary weakness, there's no forgiveness for me. Gabriella also fell silent, burying her face in my neck, only sobbing faintly. I guess she was tormented by the same thoughts and doubts. What will happen now? How to live on with this burden? The next few days turned into hell. I couldn't find peace, cursing myself with the worst words. I cowardly avoided Gabriella, made up excuses to cancel lessons. I was afraid to look my wife in the eye, as if I had the word cheater branded on my forehead. But Gabriella wouldn't give up. 
She called me, texted me, tried to meet in private. There was such a plea and longing in her voice that my heart ached, but I held on. I was afraid that if we were left alone, it would all happen again. Meanwhile, my wife Kate seemed to suspect something. I was acting too strange, too jumpy at her every question. I started staying out late, citing work. I lied, made excuses, got confused in my testimony. I was disgusted with myself. One day, Kate showed up at our lesson. Surprise, she said, decided to see how mom was doing. My insides plummeted. This is it, the unmasking. Now everything will come out and my life will collapse like a house of cards. But Gabriella held up well. She smiled imperturbably, joked. I almost believed myself that there was nothing between us. She masterfully played the role of a diligent student. Only pain lingered in her eyes. When Kate left, Gabriella and I had a debriefing. We can't go on like this, we decided. The risk is too great, the burden of guilt too heavy. We must stop this madness before it's too late, for the sake of our families, for the sake of our souls. It's easy to say, stop. But how can you stop the heart? How can you erase those delightfully shameful moments from your memory? We continued to meet at lessons, but now there was like a glass wall between us, as if we were near but untouchable. One awkward movement, one wrong look, and the wall cracked. We broke down on my birthday. Kate threw a big party, invited friends and relatives, gifts, congratulations, a feast, everything as it should be. And I was sitting on pins and needles, because next to me at the same table sat Gabriella, so beautiful and desirable in her scarlet dress. All evening our eyes met, sending a current through exposed nerves. How many times I rushed to run away, to hide, to get drunk into oblivion. We ran into each other in the kitchen when I went out for a smoke. We just stood there looking at each other, unable to look away. And then Gabriella stepped forward and pressed herself against me with her whole body. The long-held desire flooded over my head. I missed you so much, she breathed into my lips. I missed you so much, my love. And I was lost. I barely managed to drag her into the pantry before it hit me completely passion multiplied by adrenaline and alcohol, an explosive mixture. We made love fiercely, frantically, muffling moans and cries, and then the pantry door flew open. There stood my wife, Kate, her face frozen in a mask of shock and pain. Here it is, the appearance of the unfaithful husband and the prodigal mother to the people. Curtain. Everything is like in a fog after that. Screaming, crying, broken dishes. Kate waved her arms and shouted something about betrayal, meanness, unworthiness. I didn't even try to make excuses. What can you say here? Yes, I'm a bastard. Yes, I'm a scoundrel. I deserved it. Gabriella was sobbing, trying to explain something to her daughter, but Kate wouldn't even listen. Get out, both of you, she shrieked. I can't stand the sight of you. The guests hastily retreated, casting sidelong glances at us. A scandal, a sensation. And so Gabriella and I are on the street, confused and lost. Where to now? What to do? How to live with the burden of guilt and shame? It's time to reach for the pills and whiskey, to drown the pain in the whirlpool of self-destruction. But you know what? Looking at Gabriella's tear-stained face, at her trembling lips, I suddenly realized, not all is lost. After all, we have each other. Even at the cost of so much suffering, we found our love. So will we back down? Will we give up? Let's leave, I said, squeezing her hands. Somewhere far away, we'll start a new life, together. She smiled through her tears, nodded, hugged me tightly, hiding her face against my chest, and I felt hope filling my heart. We'll make it. We'll handle everything, as long as we have each other. That's the story. A story of forbidden love, big mistakes, and even greater strength of spirit. Life sometimes presents strange surprises. It hits you hard arranges tests of endurance, but then it gives you a chance, a chance to be happy despite everything. I don't know what awaits Gabriella and me in the future. It won't be easy, that's for sure. But I'm ready to take the risk. I'm ready to fight for our love, because some things are worth fighting for to the end. Thank you for listening to this heart-wrenching story. I hope you took something important from it. Listen to your heart. Don't be afraid to take risks for the sake of real feelings, but also, don't forget the price that sometimes has to be paid for mistakes. Be honest with yourself and your loved ones. And who knows, maybe someday you too will be lucky enough to meet your one and only love. God forbid, not under such dramatic circumstances as I did. Did you like this story? 
let us know in the comments what you liked. Subscribe to our storytelling podcast. Also, don't forget to like and ring the bell so you don't miss more interesting stories. See you soon.